Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the country's biggest stars and some of my favourite people. And Jamie Raven has had a tremendous 2015. He shot to fame on Britain's Got Talent and once again made magic cool. He's back on the road and in The Illusionist in the West End through the winter. And he's on with some tremendous acts. We'll talk about that in a bit. First, so Jamie joins us on the phone now. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Do you know, it's good to talk to you because you were one of those people that stuck out on Britain's Got Talent. So many are so easily forgotten and you managed to sort of break through. I, I guess the first question is, how did you even get on the live shows? Because so many are got rid of before you even make it to TV. Yeah, so the, the way the, the process works is there's, there's the audition phase, which, which everyone's aware of. Um, when um, I did mine, I was on the last day. So I was on February, it was the end of February and we were in London and... The auditions are carried out throughout the country, so um, I believe they're done in Birmingham and in Manchester and, and Scotland, I think, and, um, and other places. And I, I went on, uh, yeah, to the Dominion Theatre. There was myself, and I think there was about 30 other people auditioning that day. Um, and you, you arrive and you, you do your, you, you know, they know what you're going to do in terms of your act, and, and you get given a slot and you wait, and then eventually you get called through and Ant and Deck are waiting for you, and they literally just say, how are you feeling? And you sound terrified, and they say, right, off you go. And then, then, then you're away. <laughs> it must be an incredible pressure because you've got one shot, and if you screw it up, it's going to make better TV than if you get it right. Yeah, it is It is. Um, it is difficult. Um, so um, I, I'm not, not saying it's any more difficult for people who do do something professionally, but this, this is what I do um, for a living, and it's what I have done for 11 years. So... I knew when I went on the show it was a risk um, because if it went well, and, and thankfully it has, um, it opens up a whole other world of possibilities that weren't open to me before. Um, if it doesn't go so well, um, I had maybe 40 events sort of lined up after I did that audition. <laughs> and that, I know that's going to be aired if it doesn't work because it makes you know great television. Um, and all of the people that had booked me would all of a sudden go well wait a minute why do, why do we want this guy because we've just seen him on television and he was rubbish um, yeah, yeah. and and so it was it was for me there was there was that sort of level of, of pressure added on as well but it was something I've, I've thought about doing you know since the show was conceived I mean I, I, this year was the ninth year and as you know whatever you think of the program if you do a performance for a living um there is no better stage to to raise your platform um than to go on that show so in the end the pros outweighed the cons so I went for it and yeah couldn't believe how well it went <laughs> and I guess for you it's tricky because with magic there are anomalies that can go wrong whereas with a singer you're relying on your voice and you can control that there are sort of extra risks that you are relying on other things how do you prepare for that or is it just years of doing it and hoping for the best yeah there's I think yeah, if, if you if you just go out and hope for the best I think unfortunately you, 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 you will come unstuck at some point and sadly there is no no other answer than the fact that you just have to practice, 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 practice. So you you, you work out what you want to do in any performance, um, and then you, for, for me as a magician, obviously there's a lot of things that could go wrong. Other than, like you said, as a singer, um, obviously it, it's it's exactly the same pressure. But let's say what, what worst case scenario for a singer, you know, the lights could go out or the microphone breaks or um, whatever, the backing track stops or whatever it might be. But for what we're doing, there are a couple of other things that can go wrong. So you always have to plan ways out so that if there is an issue while you're doing your performance, you can carry on. And to the audience watching, they'll hopefully they'll be unaware that anything did go wrong. Yeah. Obviously, you know deep down inside that something has. Um, but it's a case of being prepared and, and you've worked out what could possibly go wrong. Um, and, and you have something up your sleeve, as it were, to deal with just in case that happens. I know now they're inviting people to go on the show. Were you invited to audition or did you go in at your own risk? Yeah, the, the, with the show, um, there are there are always going to be lots and lots of um, singers and dancers. Um, just generally, I think this year when I was looking at it in the semi-finals, I think there were forty-five acts, and, and I don't know if this is exactly right, but I think about thirty of them were singers, uh, singers individual or groups or dancers of some sort. So there aren't there aren't that many um, other sort of variety acts that get through because there are just less of them. Um, so I, you know, I've been approached. Um, for a number of years as, as have lots of people in lots of different varieties um, and then yeah I've just yeah, got chatting to some people this year and thought oh, it would be a good idea so I um, decided to go for it I'm slightly nervous by it because there's sort of public votes involved I spoke to an act last week who now is paid to go on the show it's getting a bit complicated I think they're sort of running out of acts and having to book pros to sort of do it to fill the gaps aren't they um, to 
be honest, I, I yeah, I don't really know because um, I, I I wasn't paid to go on it. I don't know. I, I to be honest, I've never heard of anyone who was paid to go on it. But obviously, you're not privy to to what other people are are told. But no, I can only tell you from my experience. I, I wasn't paid anything to go on. They they asked me if I well, when we got into the process of deciding whether or not to do it. Um, the guys I sort of work on all the stuff with. Um, we just decided to give it a go and. Obviously, it's it's such a big operation. There are there are so many things going on, especially when it gets to the live shows. You know, in terms of like sets having to be changed for different acts, and even in the auditions, there's lots of different styles of people doing their auditions. So yeah. it's, it's a very well planned out process. Um, but I think it, it's a show that is now going to be ten years old next year, um, and and it, like everything, everything runs its course eventually. Um, but you know, hopefully, there'll be some new people, you know, new acts this year that can come on and and amaze and entertain everybody. Um, but it is, yeah, it's, it's like you say, there's, there's 10 years down the line. I, I think it gets much more difficult for, for the guys who run the show each year to get lots of different people because I think most people who wanted to have done it by now will have already given it a go. When you go and see somebody like David Copperfield, they always play you the video of when they were a child making the rabbit appear out the hat and stuff like that. Were you one of those yeah. kids that always wanted to be a magician? Um, do you know, when I was growing up, I, I mean, the earliest recollection I've, I'm, I'm sure I saw magic before you know a party or something when I was a kid but my earliest recollection was about 10 or 11 and we were on holiday um, visiting some friends and families they lived in India and uh, a magician came over to our, our table where we were having a meal and he did some tricks and I I don't remember having seen it before I probably had but, but I don't remember and obviously I didn't realise at the time you know 10 years later that's what I would be doing um, for a living but I didn't know and, and I watched it and I loved it um, and then I, I was interested and I, I picked up, you know, one or two tricks along the way. Um, but it was never, I never thought, oh, this is what I'm going to do. This is like, you know, like when I wanted to be a footballer, but I was just absolutely rubbish at football. So that was never, <laughs> never going to happen. But um, it was something that was a hobby of mine um, and an interest. And in when I had some spare money, if I, you know, if I had a pay round, if I had a job, I used to go up into town and there's some magic shops. One's um, at Charing Cross Underground and there's one on Clerkenwell Road. And you could go in and you could, you could buy the secrets. You could you could be you know let in on this secret world of how to do all these wonderful things, and and that's what it was for me. And then it was a hobby. And then I was at university, and um, I met a guy uh, just by chance, and he ran sort of a small events company, and we got chatting. And he said, "What do you want to do?" And I was like, "Well, I don't really know." So I was studying an economics degree at the time, and I didn't really want to go down that route. And he said, "Well, I run a company, and we we do events. You know, do you want to come and just wander around with everyone, have some, you know, have a laugh?" It was about that was in two thousand and one. I went. And um, obviously David Blaine had, had come on the scene since, and I think Darren Brown was, was starting to do his thing as well. And it was becoming, you know, more popular. And there weren't that many people doing it at the time. There's, there's, you know, thankfully there's loads more now. Um, and that was it. I, I just sort of got lucky and fell into it. And then I finished my degree, and I just started doing it for, for a living. And that was it. And then ten years later, went on, went on the show. Now, how do you know that this is for you? Is it the audiences that quickly let you decide? Yeah, well, I think in terms of doing it professionally, you know, if you know if you're any good because you go and do a show, and if they rebook you again, you know what I mean, you, you get you get asked yeah. to go back, or if, if if after after doing something, somebody comes up to you and says, oh, I'd, you know, I'm getting married next year, or oh, it's my birthday, I'm 50 next year, could you come and do that for me and my friends? I mean, people think you're worthy of entertaining their friends on the basis of you know spending half an hour with you, then then I think you know I'll, I'll, I'll you know not really in a position to comment on whether I'm I'm any good or not myself, but you know, to just let other people, other people decide. And I was able, well, I am, I've, I've done it for a living. I'm 32 now. I've been doing it for 12 years. So um, hopefully it means I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> Seems to me the natural home for any magician, as great as it is in the West End, and we'll get to that in a moment, is Las Vegas. Is that a dream of yours? It's never been bigger. You've got Copperfield on one side of the street, Chris Angel, who's probably the biggest in the world right now, on the other. It's huge. Every casino has a magic show. No, well, that was it. I mean, Las Vegas is obviously, like, you know, in its own way it's the entertainment capital of of the world in what it does and obviously the 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 town is based on getting people in um for you know for casinos or, or for whatever and as a result each each hotel has its own entertainment and you know if you go and watch copperfield if you go and watch um chris angel or you know lance burton they have the best setups the best theaters the shows are designed you know to be the best they can be to, to showcase magic in the best light it can and that's that's that is like you know the mecca of entertainment. So mm. in, in in my profession, so obviously the West End for, as a, as an Englishman, you know the West End for me is up there. It's on a par. So being able to do this show in in November is a dream come true for me. And you know one day if if it was to happen, then obviously that would be that would be absolutely 
absolutely incredible. The Illusionist is coming to the West End and it's got a tremendous cast. I saw it last year and there you are at the front of the poster. They chose you to headline it. That's a great compliment. Well, you know, in, in terms of performing for my career, this is the biggest honour I've ever had. Do you know I mean? Number one, being asked is, is you know, I didn't, you know, you, you can't top it for, for, for someone who does what we do. If, if you care passionately about, you know, live performing, you know, especially in like theatre shows and to be in the West End of London doesn't get any bigger. There's so many great acts in it. Kevin James is one of my favourites. He's the guy who, we won't give it away, but sort of chops the lady in half and something <laughs> spectacular happens. Something else happens, yeah. I guess when these peers are on the same bill as you and you're sort of the top of the poster, again, it must be a pinch yourself moment. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, it's, you know, I, I, to be honest, I, you know, I don't really think about it like that. I, I think we're, we're all playing a part in doing a, a wonderful show. And, and for me, the, the pinch yourself moment was, was, as I said, being asked be alongside yeah. all these guys who I've looked up to and respected for my whole you know there's guys in there who've been performing almost well probably longer than I've been alive and they you know they're the people that I've looked up to who I've only ever seen on a lecture I've been sitting at the back of a the theatre you know watching them talk about what they do at a convention yeah. or you know to, to be asked to perform alongside them is is just incredible for me and I've seen a million tricks done a million times it is in the way they're delivered because let's face it whether you're making a card appear reappear disappear or making a woman chop in half or disappear from this side of the stage and reappear I guess it's the same thing but it's just the way you do it yeah I mean there, there's an old saying that there are only you know seven magic tricks in the world you know something appears and it disappears or something something changes form or you know information somehow moves around or, or whatever it might be and, and what I've always at the point you just said there what I've always concentrated on is the fact that number one if you, if you are a magician hopefully you're going to do something that will make people gasp at the end they'll, they'll sort of question what they've seen and mm. that's great and that's important but what's just as important for me is you know it's the journey it's not where you're going it's how you get there yeah. and if you enjoy that part just as much as the reveal then you know if, in my opinion that, that's the way I've always thought was, was the best for me and some people have said are different and they do their own thing and they're brilliant at what they do but for me that's the way I've always tried to do and very finally the pressure of doing live ITV prime time when they're all staring at you the audience and knowing that yeah. there's several million people at home is there any way of describing the pressure of that um, yeah well you know I've, I've been really lucky and I've done shows all over the world and I've, I've met lots of wonderful people um, and I've been nervous before going on but I have never ever felt like I felt before you do that because I know obviously everything that I want to say and I know everything that I want to do and I've planned, you know, in case everything, you know, goes wrong and, and how I'm, um, but you've just got to hope that you literally it's the hours that you spent practicing will, will be your saviour because you'll, you'll be going and doing it and you're, you're hoping you're sort of on autopilot. You're not because, you know, you know what you're doing, but yeah. it's, it's, um, it is terrifying. But as I said, the, the, there is no way over that. It, 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 that will never get easier um, because it, if you care about something, you always want to do the best that you can. And I, I care passionately about what I do. So I always want to do, you know, the absolute best that I can. Um, so in order for me to do that, you know, I, I respect my art and I respect my peers. And because of that, I show them the respect that they deserve by practicing for as long as I can, working as hard as I can to make it as best as, I, best as we can. Your tremendous act. Jamie Raven will be appearing in The Illusionist, which is coming to the West End uh, throughout uh, November and December. You can see the show there with some terrific acts from around the world. And then next year, what's in the diary? What are you planning? Yeah, no, really excited. So this, this as you said there, November is myself and, and six other wonderful acts. Uh, it's a show called The Illusionist. And then next year in June and July, I have my own, um, my own show that I'll be doing. Um, and all of the dates for that are, are on my website, which is um, jamieraven.co.uk. I think we've got eight on there at the minute for June, and there'll be some more announced for July next year. And that'll just be me this one. So um, I get to I get to watch and enjoy, you know, six sevenths of this show. But that one, that one will just be me. <laughs> Congratulations! You deserve every second of your success, Jamie Raven. Uh, is the man you can find out. Go to his website, jamieraven.co.uk. And the illusionist is in the West End from the 14th of November. Jamie, great to talk to you. 